destroyed. Konami. Devin Lionheart, Archie Williams, Geo Strider, Rachel Dragonstorm. Which will you choose? Choose the streamer's background.
Commander's Bedroom, Archie's Bedroom, Commander's Office, Bedroom, C Department, Casa del Sol at 9, Raynorks Law, C SG Operations Newsroom, Casa del Sol at the Beach, Casa del Sol Bar, C E Ball and Garden Bathroom, Global Bar. Hello, everyone. Yes, I know this is long overdue. Ah, uh, wow, what a night. So, we're going to be playing Final Fantasy like Ever Crisis while uh, just chatting about the Yu Gi Oh! Dark Sins. Now, I, I want to be uh, quite a. Honest, I've always tried to be honest with you people. I've always tried to tell the truth. If this truth is too dark for you, please leave the stream. I do not wish to bring any, like, overall pain to y'all. But this is my pain. In my experience with the Yu-Gi-Oh! Online community. Here tonight, I'm going to be talking about it. When the stream ends, I'll be turning in my ID. Digitally. I've had it up to here with Konami and their shenanigans. Including that of the online community and how they treat people. Now, I've already mentioned before how I, Commander Devon, how I, the Commander, was once known as YGO DLH, or better known as Devon Lionheart, the Yu Gi Oh! duelist. I was a Yu Gi Oh! content creator before I was a VTuber. What I have not gone into full explanation of is. The full reason of why I, I no longer do content. It's true, my channel is gone. Others say I deleted it. That is an outlandish lie. And I forgot to turn something off in the kitchen. I love staying in a one bedroom apartment sometimes. Let's get started. In 2016, I'm sure everyone remembers the debacle of Konami finally at least saying something about the online um, harassment. There's a difference between online harassment and online bullying. It goes far more deeper than that. There's a lot of things the community doesn't want you to know. And this is one of them. How they wanted Devin Lionheart, formerly, aka YGODOH, your commander, to be the fall guy for their community. It is true that everyone knows the Yu-Gi-Oh! Online community is one of the most toxic and controversial. If not one of the greatest threats to anybody and everyone's mental stability online. At this point, it is a meme, but it's one of the dark true memes. In 2016, there was a bit of an issue with online harassment with an individual called Barfa. 
as Farfa was attacking several content creators and individuals. But it wasn't merely just him. It was many others. And sadly, a lot of them y'all may obviously admire or even look up to. These individuals are some of the most uniquely messed up. And I'm going to be honest. At one time, Almos decided to be the fall guy for them. I thought about it. But then I said no. If only for a brief moment. So let's get started. Uh, during the overall issue in the Yu-Gi-Oh! community, there was a very, very big problem. This problem involved several content creators voicing their opinions in a negative fashion. This negative fashion led to that of demanding certain smaller content creators to be forced to leave the platform as they felt that they were causing a lot out of trouble for the big boys in Konami. These people in the community were content creators that had less than over 5,000 subscribers. Now, I was one of these individuals. In 2016, I had 127 subscribers. No more, no less by the end of it. If I'm remembering straight. Now, at this time, I was still well endowed and even still loved Yu-Gi-Oh! to the top of my core. The Yu-Gi-Oh! online community is filled with some of the most toxic individuals. They do not care who you are, where you come from, what you're doing, how you're doing it, or how rich, how poor, or how successful you are. If you do not fit within their parameters of their beliefs on what you should do and only do for Konami, They will do anything and everything to chase you out. They will all do just about anything, such as doxing your identity, your address, even that of swatting you. This happened. Greatly, it didn't happen to me. Because I never gave the Yu-Gi-Oh! online community my actual address. As a matter of fact, I've never actually given y'all my address. I've given y'all a fixed location, but not the actual place. I'm not an idiot. Far from it. I'm a smart-ass motherfucker. I know how the internet works. I know how people are. How cruel, selfish, and unforgiving. <sighs> but despite all this, at one time I thought I could fix the community's problems by becoming champion. 
How naive I was. How naive and immature I was. Oh, that I was. That, that I was, cadets. Everyone, I was probably one of the most gullible and immature content creators on their platform. And even though the VTubing community feels that, that way about me right now, well, that's on them. I can already hear the Yu-Gi-Oh! content creators when they see this on YouTube. Go like, oh, you motherfucker, we're coming after you again. Yep, that's going to be a thing. But I'm okay with that. So, because I'm a tougher grader of content creator. They couldn't break me before, they can't break me now. The overall process they were planning to do, they were looking at small and content creators such as myself. They were looking for someone that was willing to be the fall guy for Farfa. As they felt that Farfa was a huge problem. Along with various others. So the main issue is... They thought, okay, so we can't get rid of Farfa. Farfa's too valuable. He's too important. He may have fucked up, but he's far too special. He's done far too much for our community, even though he just freaked up. Well, they should have got rid of him. But, like every good story, of right and wrong, despite what you tried to do to fix it, it's still a problem. You go online community is a problem. And they still are. So, yeah. But why am I exposing this now? We'll get to that in a bit. Uh, despite all this, they wanted someone to be the fall guy. So they he looked at the content creator with the least amount of subscribers. Someone that can instantly save them from themselves. They looked at no one other than me and several others. I would have to say there was one individual that was not okay with this. Until this day, I feel guilty. This individual was known as Galactic God. A God he was. A god amongst the community. But he was looking to get out anyways. He no longer wanted to be a part of it. And he wanted to worry about his family. More power to you, man. More power to you. I respect it. I really do. Galactic God 
in a way, ended up leaving because I choose, I chose not to be the fall guy. At first, they kindly asked me. They started kindly asking me time and time and time again. I kept telling them no. This went on for about two weeks, four days, seven hours in total of the kindness. And I realized what I just did there. Um, Yuppie is not ready for that. We're going to retire this. So, yeah. They wanted me to be that guy. When they realized they couldn't make me be that guy. I'm munching on some tater tots, folks. I'm hungry. But when they realized I couldn't be that guy. They then started to demand me to be. Make it feel like it was my responsibility to be the fall guy. They wanted me. They demanded me. They ordered me. They wanted to force me to do it. By any means necessary. Even threatening to dox my location. These individuals almost did it. But then they decided not to. Instead, they decided to threaten me even harder. In my family. They started sending my family threatening emails. My sister, my father, my mother's accounts. My mother didn't have one. My father did. My sister did. But they called my mother's phone. They called the home phone. They harassed us. They attacked us. Without a care in the world. Because they wanted me to be the fall guy. My parents, they were beside themselves. They realized, holy fucking shit. What's going on? Son, talk to us. I talked to them. I told them what was going on. I said, it's my problem. Don't worry about it. They say it's our problem now because they're doing this to us. They were doing that to my family. And me, by vice versa. There was phone calls, there was emails, there was people at our front fucking door. This never got out. Because the news media didn't want you to know shit. And neither did Konami. They didn't want y'all to know this. Because they want y'all to believe Konami is great. Konami is gold. Konami is unstoppable. Yu-Gi-Oh! has no sins inside their door. There's... And then Konami did what they had to do. Instead of me being the fall guy, they decided to address the situation. And I think it was like November or October of 2016, Konami addressed the situation. They merely only talked about it, nothing more. 
They didn't address who was the attackers. They didn't address who was the victims to protect them. In a way, I understand that. But in a way, it pisses me off. Because us, they gave no reason or that of moral support to the victims. And they didn't do me because I refused to be their fall guy. I refuse to fall for them and their company and their community along with their products. All the time when, when like old fans or even that of random people ask me you like do you ever think I could be a Yu-Gi-Oh content creator? Do you think it'd be a good career choice? I tell them no. I tell them no, it's not worth it for your mental and physical health. It's not worth it. I told my sister's kids that. I tell other people that. I tell that uh, uh, to children that. Because they want to enter the community. I tell them it's not worth it. It's not worth it your health. When I was at a Yu-Gi-Oh! online community, I was the most unhealthy in my life. I was unhealthy, miserable, and even that, so filled with dread. In 2019, my channel was hacked. Stolen by another and then deleted. They figured out my password that back then and even till now there's things called password generators. Password generators are able to generate a default password that you can put into an account. I used this on my old account. Someone figured it out and deleted the channel and all of its videos. Back before any like archiving was a thing. It's all gone. I don't want it to stay gone. I don't want any of those videos to come to surface ever again. The darkness that looms over this game is far more damaging than anyone can imagine. The dark and twisted individuals that are in charge of that community are some of the most fucked up individuals I have ever had the chance to even talk to, or even attempt to. If anybody listens to this live stream from the VTubing community, not community, platform. I keep screwing that platform. VTubing platform. Please heed what I'm saying and take it seriously. Do not get involved with the Yu-Gi-Oh! online community or Konami. They will only bring you pain anger, and that of failure. I know this more than anyone. I was one of the victims of 2016 and beforehand.
fact of the matter is. This all comes about from my locals today. I noticed there was a player that had difficulties. His brother was a meta player. This has never happened to me before in the tabletop experience. I was worried about his brother as he was having a hard time understanding the game. I myself have problems with this person was a whole new level. I tried to address the brother. He told me it was none of my concern and I'm not mentally disabled. And yet this meta player knows nothing about me. And for him to insist that I'm not mentally disabled and not uh, taking any medications definitely shows the mindset of the meta players of Yu-Gi-Oh. Their inconsiderate and even twisted thoughts on how the game should be played and presented. I'm going to be real. I've played against meta players in other games many of times and compared to them and the Yu-Gi-Oh meta players in the tabletop experience well let's just say Yu-Gi-Oh meta players are the devil and video game meta players are the fucking angels they make the Yu-Gi-Oh! meta players look like angels compared to them. And that's saying something. The meta players on the tabletop experience are so cold-hearted and ruthless. For many of reasons that I'm not going to go into right now. I'm not a meta player. I will say this, when a meta player loses to a Dark Magician deck, they lose their goddamn fucking minds. They can't control their anger. They lose any worth of their self-worth and being. They become um, outlandish, rageful lunatics. As of right now, I've had it up to here with everything you know. I've already been trying to get out of it nice and slow. I just can't take it anymore. I cannot take the Yu-Gi-Oh! products or community. They are what they are. They can't be helped. They can't be saved. They can't be fixed. They're incapable of doing anything appropriately or effectively. Much like Val. Konami is like Blizzard. They are incapable of doing anything other than lining their own pockets. Now, other things I want to get into, Konami sins. Resolves around the community. Do y'all know how Konami treats their community? How they pay them and sponsor them. How they literally support their content creators.
I'm sure you have heard some things. Or even rumors. But not the full truth. Well, I'm gonna be that guy. And reveal it all. Hold on to your lug nuts, everyone. It's time to reveal oh, Konami's art. Or obviously, business tactics with their content creators. So, the subscriber thing's not an issue. But it's how Konami addresses the overall amount of subscribers and how they force you into a contract that's right you heard it here Konami forces their uh, community members in a contract a contract that makes them get paid only in Yu-Gi-Oh cards. But that ain't the half of it. Okay, they only pay in Yu-Gi-Oh cards. No money, no support, no PC or financial aid whatsoever. As a matter of fact, Konami's overall thoughts on like any type of aid for the content creator is like, oh, you need aid? You need help. You think you're people. <laughs> That's Konami for you. That's the industry of Konami. So, yeah. Now, when you sign this contract, they sign you in with a contract deal for at least about two to three years. Maybe one. If they deem you an experiment. This is how they get content creators to be marketing boys. They want marketing boys. And girls, believe it or not, to sell their product for them. This is a shady business tactic as they don't own one to put money or time or effort into their own marketing. As they find this as a cheap and even that of a perfect tactic, even though it's pretty and twisted and flawed to sell their product to the masses. The car on track has several conditions. So, what are these conditions? Condition one, must be willing to sell the image of all new product, even that of certain product that is successful in Japan for that of global release. So, if a certain card, or deck, or format is successful in Japan, and it comes out in America, or globally, it's the Yu-Gi-Oh! community's overall job to sell that image of that product, or that card, or that strategy, or that deck. Despite how they know it's a bad idea, as it's not going to do anything for the game. This is really one of the most unique marketing tactics they use and they entrap you with. Marketing tactic two. I mentioned this briefly, but one of the conditions is Tanami is not liable for any broken or even that infected PCs as you're a content creator under contract with them. 
Meaning they give no financial aid for anything lost of your PC. They go, if you if your PC falls under fire in your career, that's on you and only you. We're not going to overall give you financial aid. Hey, Joey. Sorry, I don't feel like having you on call here today. But, yeah. For tonight, at least. Um, and for good reason. But, we're not, I mean, obviously not willing to give any financial aid for our loss of equipment. That's not the last of it. When you're signed into a deal contract to sell their product, they also entrap you where you also do not get any financial aid of cash for, or obviously, your incentive and your work. They do not pay you any money. The only thing they pay you in is in booster packs and booster boxes and products where then you have to sell the product to get money back but since 2018 they made a change where if you get a premiere of a new product that's not officially out in the market you can't sell the new cards right away that which i understand this but at the same time it does hurt the content creator financially. As then they have to wait for the official set to come out to sell the rare cards they got in the set that they did a pre-release opening for. Next I want to mention is the next dark and twist thing you're signing to the contract for. That is obviously mental or physical aid. When you're a Yu-Gi-Oh! content creator, Konami does not uh, give you any aid medically. These medical aids do not exist. They do not support you like this. To them, they're incapable of it. Because to them, they say, oh, you have, obviously, like, a, a downtrodden mindset to a point where you can't create content right now. We understand this, but we're not going to support you financially through this endeavor. You're on your own with that. What about physical health? What if you get, uh, it's obviously sick and you can't do content for them under contract? Yet again... They do not support you financially this way. They refuse to. Because in their eyes, that's on you. Another issue in the contract of when you're a content creator with Konami for Yu-Gi-Oh! is a very twisted one. You have no choice but to continue only to make Yu-Gi-Oh! content on the channel you registered with Konami. Meaning you can only do that of Yu-Gi-Oh! content, nothing else. If you want to create another content uh, form of content, you have to create a different channel. They will not support this. But even more so, Konami goes out of their way to make sure the other channel does not make it. Let it be known, the Yu-Gi-Oh! community is okay with this online community. They're all okay with this dark and twisted and overall deal. 
Konami will not give any incentive or any care for the individuals that sell their product for people to buy. I can literally care less anymore about Konami. I can care less about continuing to play Yu-Gi-Oh! I've had it up to here with the meta players. I've had it up to here with the online community. I've had it up to here with Konami's failures to adjust or fix anything. Tonight, I'm turning in my ID. Digitally. And I'm throwing it in the trash. I am done. I have had it. With the inconsiderate and conceited content players and meta uh, players in their communities. I can no longer take the harassment. I will no longer stand for this. Meta players are some of the worst players ever to grace a card game. Meta players in Yu-Gi-Oh! make meta players in video games look like angels. I just can't take it anymore. Can't take it anymore from me. I've had. The darkness that surrounds Konami and Yu-Gi-Oh! is too much for me to bear anymore. I can't. I won't. And I shall not be silent about it anymore. I am one of the victims of 2016 on how they wanted me to be a fall guy for Konami in the Yu-Gi-Oh! community online. Just can't take it anymore. They are no good. They are incapable of being good. They're incapable of reason and understanding. I just can't handle it anymore. I can't handle or deal with Yu-Gi-Oh! The darkness that uh, looms over the game like an ever and being shadow will always haunt Konami and the game itself. I can't take it anymore. I shouldn't have to take it. I shouldn't have to be harassed, attacked, and even accused. By anything they do. Anything and everything. Each and every time. These days I play Yu-Gi-Oh! At the locals. Just to try to enjoy it. Anymore. It's like a sharp overall pain of guilt. And even that of sorrow. Not only for the state of the game, but that of how I was treated and many others on the online community. <laughs> God damn. I can't take it anymore.
I know I shouldn't be breaking down on stream. But what they've done, people like me. So fucked up. I just can't be silent anymore. I shouldn't have to be silent anymore. But I'm not going to be. What they did to me and what they do to others. I can't take it. I shouldn't have to take it. I shouldn't have to feel guilty for playing a game I once loved. And enjoy. Just can't anymore. Just can't anymore, everyone. Why do they have to turn a blind eye to us? People that have been victimized. Why? Why do they continue these dark tactics? Can't take it anymore. Shouldn't have to take it. You know? I have to feel guilty. <laughs> For what they've done to me. I'm sorry everyone, I'm gonna have to cut off the stream. <laughs> I need time to heal. Okay.